Here's an interesting little tidbit. We're driving through South Korea having this big old car chase, and Andy Serkis says, Turn on the radio. And it's this hip-hop kind of electronic style music going through, obvious American. And I'm thinking, well, shouldn't that like be Shiny or G-Dragon or Girls boom generation whatever or any number of k-pop bands i'm embarrassed to know the names of hey true believers englantine here and this is my review of the black panther movie i have seen gods fly i've seen men build weapons that i couldn't even imagine Uh uh-huh i've seen aliens drop from the sky yeah but i have never seen anything like this how much more are you hiding Well, the Black Panther movie's upon us, and, well, nothing's changed. According to all the hype, I thought there would be change. I at least didn't think that I would be sitting in a half-empty theater on opening night. Well, it was Thursday, to tell you the truth, when I saw it. But it was a very, very uh, interesting thing, because I walked in, I was like, holy crap, there's like five minutes to start. And... Uh, a black guy behind me started laughing and he goes what's all the white people doing back here we started laughing over the hype it was kind of funny but um that's neither here nor there i just thought that was a, a funny little anecdote having to do with the hype versus the film itself but sitting down to see the film itself man i gotta tell you this is a pretty movie let's get that right out there this is a good movie to look at if you think I like the way Wakanda looks, wait until you see the film because Kugler is in love with establishing shots, man. These wide, it's like he said, we spent money to have this shit made. We're going to show it off every five seconds because any place he goes into, it's like they might as well have those Civil War names across Black Panther's house because, man, it's just always big, wide establishing shots. It looks great, though. It's just after a while, it's like, okay, countdown, wide shot. Son, it is your time. Show me my respect and bow down. All right, let's get some performances out of the way. Let's talk about the actors, because in all, all honesty, this is an actor's film. Okay, this is this is more character. There's action in it. Don't get me wrong, but this is about the character. There's political intrigue. That's what this movie is. Bozeman plays what's on the page to perfection. That being said, there is not much on the page for him to do. Aside from some scenes with his sister, really, he is not given a lot until he puts on that Black Panther suit and starts jumping around. And we knew that B. Jordan can bring it, but he delivers in this film. He is a great killmonger. The man, you could tell he's having a blast, and he wants to carry everybody on his back to make them have fun too, if that is what is necessary. That being said, anybody in this movie that has gray hair or is supposed to have gray hair, Angela, well, she does in the movie. They school the shit out of the young ones. They carry a lot to their characters, even when there's not a lot on the page for them to do. Seriously. They, you, you can sometimes see other characters acting. They are flat out naturals. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Don't freeze. I never freeze. All right, there is one weak link in the bunch, and that's Kaluuya here. There is never a time that I think that he believes he's in Wakanda. He is, you can see the mechanisms. Sorry, guys, weak performance in an otherwise strong film. Now let's talk about the tokens. (laughs) Yeah, there's only two. Uh, Martin Freeman plays an American accent, does it all right, no problem, ultimately forgettable. Andy Serkis grabs onto the scenery and begins to chew. You want to talk about somebody who's having fun playing his role. It, by the end of this movie, you're going to want more circus. That is it. Man, if they made a claw film, you'll be happy. If there was like one of those Disney cartoons starring Andy Serkis at the beginning, you would be a very happy camper. He nails this role. Just damn fun. Love claw in this film. The revolution will not be televised. Show me my respect. And bow down. We own it. But for as much as I like Andy Serkis in this movie, this film belongs to the ladies. 
give me a women of Wakanda film starring these characters written by the same script writer and you will have a good movie. I would watch that because they nail it. They're, the, the best scenes involve one of the women. I don't care which one, but all of the best scenes in this film involve them. Even at the end with the final showdown, every time they cut away from the ladies, it's like, yeah, okay, get back to the women. Get back to what they're doing. That's more interesting. And the sister, Letitia here, Letitia Wright, I believe it is, she nails it as a sister. She is the comic relief. She is the character that brings the Black Panther down to earth because there are a lot of times where this movie gets way self-serious and then she pops up, does something, it's funny, and it's realistic. It's like, okay, now that's a person who lives in Wakanda in modern day. I waited my entire life for this. The world's gonna start over. I'm gonna burn it all. Okay, here is where I lose people and they go to the comment section. You suck, you racist mother. The CGI is such a mixed bag in this film. It sucks sometimes. I mean, it is horrible. Like, the transformations, the suit, the sometimes uh, the, the ships and things, they are fine. And you could tell that in some areas, they really paid attention to detail to make everything look as realistic as possible. And then it's other times where well, these bitches are in a cartoon. It is obviously they're up against green screen. And it is ridiculous how bad it is. And it's not even that. There's a scene where there's a rhino, and it looks like that golden compass polar bear. I mean, it is horrible, horrible CGI in this movie. And it's sometimes right next to really good CGI. So it just makes it stand out where you're like, damn, that's bad. And there's a scene, it's a ritual in the beginning of the film. We've seen the preview, it's right here, where he's standing and you see all the people. Now, don't look up. Look at Chadwick Boseman and the people in front of him. They're obviously real. That's where you need to look. Because if your eyes go to the top of that, you will see the cartooniest cartoons outside of the Fuller, Polar Freaking Express. It's like they blew their budget and just had to deal. What happens now determines what happens to the rest of the world. There are some great things about this movie, and there are some horrible things about this movie. And I'm not talking about bad. There are some horrible things about this film. One, I told you about the rhinoceros and the, the CGI in some places, but also the dialogue and how it's delivered. And more so in the beginning. As it goes, he stops doing this, but I'm going to blame Ryan Coogler. And let me tell you, I like Ryan Coogler's work. Fruitville Station's great. We all know Creed is fucking perfect. But there are scenes where characters are talking and there's a way people talk and have conversations and sometimes they overlap. Sometimes they, it, you could tell people are, you know, reacting rather than remembering. And here you, you hear the machinations of the dialogue. So you'll have somebody, are you going to the store? Yes, I am going to the store. What will you buy at the store? I will buy bread at the store. What will you use the bread for? I will use the bread to make sandwiches. It is just so stiff between actors. And granted, it is more so in the beginning than it is in the later parts of the film. But it is so freaking noticeable to me. Now, I hope I didn't ruin anybody who haven't seen the film yet. But yeah, that just bothered me because it slows down some scenes to the point of painfulness. Just get going with it already. And I just wanted more of a natural rapport between these actors because you have some great actors in these roles doing great performances. By gosh, please give us something cool like that. On the other hand, sometimes everything flows smoothly. So Kugler really is the best and the worst thing about this film. Okay, that's hyperbole. Uh, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad, and in the end, it's a, a bit of a mixed bag. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. What kind of forever? The revolution will not... Ooh, I almost forgot M'Baku, played by Winston Duke. 
nailed it. This is a character I want to see more of also, and thankfully he's going to be in Avengers Infinity War. I got to say, man, uh, one, they were right not to call him Man-Ape. I don't think that would go over even if it is an all-black cast and black director. However, he freaking kills it. So, yeah, just enjoy him, man. I think this review is all over the place, but to be honest, so is the movie. So I don't think I could take full credit for this. I mean, there are scenes that are brilliant. I love the world building, and that's what this really is. I like the fact that the stakes are more personal. Granted, we do see the same thing we saw with Iron Man. We see the same thing we saw with uh, Ant-Man, where basically they're fighting, or actually all three Captain America, well, the first two Captain America films, where basically they're fighting themselves. And that's what this is. You know, you... If they kept it with Claw and then Killmonger was the second, okay, fine, it would be something different. But uh, the the main villain is Killmonger, played by Michael B. Jordan, and he ends up not just being a character like Black Panther, but two Black Panthers in Black Panther suits. It's not like even Ant-Man versus Yellow Jacket. This is two literal Black Panthers, so it goes into that direction a little bit more so than other films, but it is just like the other origin stories in that case. I touched on it before, and I'll expand on it. The war scene outside when we've got Black Panther versus Black Panther or Killmonger at the end, I was more interested in that. I was more interested in the war going on for Wakanda rather than uh, the the battle. And this is the big end, because finally we got a Marvel movie that didn't end with mindless drones being fought there was stakes and they're like i said they're personal stakes but you felt them in the end put these two together and the movie rocks the women of wakanda own it andy circus great Michael B. Jordan, awesome. Chadwick Boseman, great with what was on the page. It's a mixed bag of a movie. It's good, it's bad, and it's meh. All at once. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Or are you like, I don't see what the big deal is? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, click like, share, of course, to get word out about the channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have before, make sure you're subscribed and make sure that that bell is rung. YouTube's messed everything up and has unsubscribed people and unbell runged them as well. And here's a little bit about Patreon and how you can win a graphic novel or trade paperback. Hey, True Believers, Zenglantine here. Now, you've heard me say on many a video, this is my only job, so please go on to, over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till. Help us keep the lights on. Help us keep uh, making videos for you. So I decided, here's something nice to do. Why not, in order to say thank you, have a graphic novel giveaway? And so I figured, why not? And Superman in the 70s is this month's giveaway to anybody who donates a dollar or more. The drawing will be on March 6th. We do have two tiers when available, we're going to be giving away hardcovers as well. And this month, we're doing both. One for the $1 or more, and one for the $5 or more. This month's graphic novel is Batman Illustrated by Neil Adams, Volume 2. Just to give you a little look at what it's all about, I've got my copy right in front of me. And a lot of people thought that it was Frank Miller who returned Batman to greatness. But if you ask me, it was Neil Adams. Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill, man, they wrote some great stories. They made some great stories, and Neil Adams' atmospheric art just looks great. It looks amazing. And this book, it is just such a great compilation. And even as you get all of these stories right here, this is the, and then you get introductions and forewords. So you get the, the history behind it as well as the stories. So yes, please go on over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till, get in the running to win Superman in the 70s, or drop five dollars or more in the till, and get in the running to win Batman Illustrated by Neil Adams, Volume 2.
I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, thank you very, very much for watching.